Now what I'm going to do is I want to spend more time just talking to everybody and doing Q and A. That's the whole format now. Uh, get done with the news, do the Q and A. That's entertaining for most people and me. Let's do this. So hang out with me. Q and A. Ask your questions now. Hey, Rusty. Basti and Birdie and Des and Neil and Capricorn and Benny and Rusty Bot and Martin. Doug. Okay. <laughs> this is a good one. Phil's mine. Selling hopium. Most stake with the impression they can unstake up September 2022. So no. Price will tank because most bought ETH under 600 and profit taking is a no-brainer for more crypto contagion. Yeah, maybe. I don't think, look, man, when they staked it, they may have heard rumblings of that. I never heard anything about that. And maybe I just wasn't a part of the Ethereum inner circle or just, I mean, I just didn't hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm just wondering if the majority of the Ethereum stakers said, September 2022 sounds good. Because what I remember was, you don't know when it's coming. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not perfect. <laughs> what's, what's up, Beardy? Are you a uniballer? Is that what it is? Ah, AI answers. It was a great show yesterday. Good chemistry between you guys and good conversation. I think it was pretty good. Some people said, well, why don't you guys disagree? There's nothing to disagree about. I agree with pretty much whatever they said. There was one point when when Guy was talking about Litecoin and transaction fees in Monero, and I was like, I don't think that's true. And I looked it up right, right as we're doing the show, and I was like, oh, damn, the guy was right. So, yeah. Damn. Tesla went below 100 bucks. I didn't know that. Hector's got a good point. Just chilling DCA. That's a T-shirt waiting to happen right there. Gently caressing the bouton. It's pretty good. I don't know if you like my, my green screen. My green screen now has no water in it. Very difficult to pull that off on a green screen. Usually, the, the dynamic green screens, I have people walk through. I put it in there. But this one, I said, you know what? No water today. Let's just not do water. <sighs> no water in the pool. Um holding what I have and staking. <laughs> Beardy with a fanny pack. Okay, pretty good. Old Bear says, how does that make sense when headlines claim so many laughs? Look, Bear, you know how this works. You've been around the block. It's all sensationalism, right? That's why I don't get like, I don't know, 10,000, 20,000 views because I don't do much of sensationalism, I think. But that's what, it's all about clicks, right? So like if they talk about, there's massive layoffs, which there is, there is layoffs. And I think unemployment rate will uh, increase, just not right now. So, I mean, even though you have like Amazon did a bunch of layoffs, uh, Meta or what was called Facebook, uh, they had a ton of layoffs as well, uh, Twitter, they did the layoffs, but I just think that uh, even though those are big companies, it's not all the companies in the United States. So those are just the numbers that we have. And even though some people say, well, it's, it's, it's junk data and uh, that's just how it is. I kind of compare the junk data of the GDP and, and uh, unemployment rates and things like that as a scale that's busted. It's not perfect, but you can gauge something by it, right? As long as you keep the same parameters. So like I go on a scale and I'm like, huh, <clears throat> I'm 195. All right. Well, at the doctor's office, I was, you know, 192, 191. But this scale is messed up. I know it is, but I'll just keep using it. And I'll gauge it from there because if it's consistently wrong, at least it's wrong by three or four pounds up. And I just uh, take it from there. Same thing with all the crap data that's out there. And also that, that also goes on too for on-chain data. You can manipulate that as much as you possibly can't want to. And you can cherry pick it all, all day long. <laughs> what? Did you take an arrow of the knee? I don't know what that, I don't know. No, I'm good. I don't know. Sweet. 
sweat issue. Hello, Gio. I had already downloaded the app previously. It's not on the list. How do I participate? Very simple. Crap. All right. There is a link. Let me find it. No. Okay. Let me throw this up there. On that same web page, I'm going to put this link into it. And it's going to say <clears throat> Sweatcoin Walking, Walking Challenge. Sign up now with your Sweatcoin app username. So I will put that on the website so you can find it. And that's it. So Gio and everybody else, if you previously got it, that's what you get. And let's be honest. Can we all use a little bit more exercise? Beardy. Rob. Yeah, I know. Me too. So let's uh, just do this. Then you can win some stuff. Mm. J-Lo. That's a pretty good name. <laughs> just curious. How expensive is real estate in Puerto Rico? It's super expensive. Benny in the house. Is that that? Ben? Sorry, Ben. I... Uh, yet again, stole more data from your website. So I appreciate you allowing me to keep stealing stuff, just so you know. Uh, I will continue to do so until you shut my access off. Let's see here. Now the question, JLo. Yes, it's super expensive. And I thought it was gonna go down and it's not going down, which kind of sucks. But there's like a, there's like a, six to 12 month lag here on the island. That's, that's what the, our friends tell us. So whatever's happening on the mainland in the States, it seems to like uh, slow down and kind of trickle over here. So once everything starts to recover, that's what it is. But I got friends in Austin and they tell me, hey, I don't know if you know this, but market's like super high. Sun's in Los Angeles. Uh, my niece is in Hollywood. And they tell me that again, California, it's like, it's like it, nothing's ever changed. It's like super high over there. But it just depends on which area of the United States you're in. I'm pretty sure menace. Let's say you're in like Dubuque, Iowa. Probably get some pretty good deals. Just saying. <laughs> Rob tells it like he has no hopium. You know, no hopium in the short term, but the long term, I'm very, very, very bullish. You guys know that I still dollar cost average. I just bought Bitcoin today. And then... I know like, like, I know a bunch of people will say, don't buy alts, don't buy alts. And they're probably right. I'll be honest with you. But how many people were so sure that Bitcoin was going to 150,000? I was. How many people were so sure Ethereum was going to 10,000? I was. How many people were so sure that Voyager VGX was going to 30 bucks? I was. So, to get back to the Bitcoin and, and Ethereum thing, everybody thought it was going to happen. It was there was insurmountable evidence, and it was just going to be like that was a foregone conclusion. And everybody was wrong, and then everybody was wrong about the June. Most people were wrong about June uh, being the bottom, and that was totally incorrect. So I'm ninety something percent sure people are right that things are going to keep going lower. I mean, even me, I talk about it all the time, but there's this piece of me that's like. You have to be a contrarian. You have to go against it. You have to do it. But you don't have to be stupid and go all in right now. You don't even have to put in the original dollar cost average amount. You can just, what I do is micro DCA. So if I was putting in, I don't know, 400 bucks a day for Bitcoin, I now just put 40 bucks a day. It's very simple. And then for the alt, same thing. If I was putting in 200 bucks a day for Ethereum, I now put 20 bucks a week and so on and so forth. So, you know, when things move up, because who knows, like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think layer ones should do pretty well. Gaming should do pretty well. Layer ones that, of course, the NFTs and stuff. Like. So time will reward me, but I have to just be around here. That's it. Thank you, Nas. I do like the green screen. Where is Guy now? Uh, I think he said Dubai. He's back in the UAB. Uh, hardcore analysis. What if we don't show up? 
when I put it, there it is. You're gonna go here. I would drop that link in, but it'll be on my on this website, which you can find right here. The link's in the description. Dandydescript.com sweatcoin giveaway. So you can just add yourself manually. <laughs> yeah, how's the poker ball? That's a good question. Degenerates. Nah, it's just poker. Army Viper, going to do a show next week. Thoughts on ETH dominance in the months ahead versus Bitcoin dominance? I... Hmm. <laughs> if everything goes what I think where I think it's going to go and people get more scared, which I think they will, especially with with contagion, it all depends on the contagion and the macro effects. If that plays out, then you'll see Bitcoin dominance go up because people are get they get super scared. And also if you also see um, you know macro factors in play. When people get more scared, they go to Bitcoin. When people get more bold, they go to alts. And the first alt they go to is ETH. So I can't tell you um, how it's going to play out. I just see that as uh, um, beyond my control there. Bring back clown news. I should. There was a good article, but I forgot to talk about it today. Yeah, hit the like button. That's always nice. Tesla crushing it. Mm, where do we go back here? Chris, stop asking me that question. I, I just, it annoys the shit out of me when people ask me these questions like constantly. ZK rollups, I think it's going to be great. ZK rollups for Ethereum, I don't understand exactly how it works. Sounds like it's going to uh, help out with transactions per second. I don't know. Georgia tab button, I'll let you friends. All right. That's yes, exactly right. Brian Long. Uh, what's the community like down there? It used to be much bigger in 2021. <laughs> used to be much bigger, that's for sure. Do you think Puerto Rico could become a kind of testing ground for adoption in the U.S.? No, I think the testing ground really is El Salvador right now. I don't think it. I don't think it's it's Puerto Rico per se. But there's a lot of there's a lot of crypto OGs here, that's for sure, and they they are. No short of talking about the things that are going on and where the next things are going. It's interesting to hear him talk. Beardy got 39 steps. That's pretty good. To the refrigerator and back. It's not bad. DCA fear. Anyone else feel that catch 22 prices are low? So you want to buy, but you don't want to put money on exchange at the moment? Yeah. That's why, like, Scott's got a great point. And it's true. It's tough to do these things because... When you're when you're buying things and you're, and you're leaving on on the exchanges, it's just like it's just a recipe for disaster because we've seen so many centralized exchanges fall. Unfortunately, that's the on ramp, really, right? I mean, for a reasonable amount, like you can you can on ramp things as far as like money to like fiat to crypto in Ledger. You can do that, but then you got to use MoonPay, and it's like four percent, five percent, six, some just stupid high and then people would, and then even if you do it you using moon pay you still have to sign up for their junk program which means they're going to have all your information anyhow so what's the point so like the thing that i do is i have uh i have recurring uh payments for coinbase you can sign up for essentially I give you dollar cost average either daily bitcoin weekly my alts or monthly my crappy alts and just buy those every time. And then some people say, but don't you have to pay the fees? You do. However, what I do is I sign up for Coinbase One. It's 39 bucks a month. And then all the fees are waived up to $10,000. So if you're spending less than that, you're probably going to save yourself some money if you just sign up for Coinbase One. It is what it is. Avi, would you sell altcoins now in a loss or wait? I would have sold altcoins in a loss before December 31st for tax loss harvesting. I would sell altcoins for a loss if I needed like, I don't know, like surgery or I'm short on cash and I can't afford even a, a PB&J sandwich. 
that would probably sell. Uh, but for right now, I mean, if I don't need need the money, what's the point of selling at losses? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, that's a good one. Fan man, good point. I did a bonk video today because I'm just, I'm just trying to keep myself busy with the things I need to do. And I was like, this is interesting. And I just, I, I talked about bonk, which is the next dog coin essentially from Solana. And I just compared it to is bonk big utility or is bonk just hype? And we took a look at it and it looks pretty hypey, let's be honest. And uh, it's dropped by 50% in like 24 hours. And Fan Man says, hey, beware of bonk. 500 million was sold, one was at the top. Coincidentally, Solana pumped by 500 million on the same day. That's the day sold pumped. It took, it took bonk money to prop up Solana. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Did we, fire? we fired James. We didn't fire James. I'll answer this for the 20th time. It's okay. Um, so like when we get tribes together, like my tribe and Ben's tribe and James tribe, we just were like, it was like that scene in, uh, what was it? Gladiator. You know, the very, very opening scene when they're fighting the, the Germanians and they're just, everybody just plowing into each other. That's pretty much how it was when we were when in the comment section. And the video is supposed to give people like hope and relief and kind of like ease some fears. And, and it was just like doing the exact opposite. So we just like, maybe we should just not co-mingle. And then uh, that was it. And then, we, you know, guy reached out, and said, hey, why don't we do a show? And that was it. I said, sure, I'll do a show with, with this guy. I like, I still like everybody. It's okay. No one's dying. Yeah. Thoughts on ICP. Insane Clown Posse. It's a great band. I don't know what they're doing anything. Or Internet Computer Protocol. One of those two. I think ICP, again, is way ahead of its time. And uh, we'll see how it goes out. But pretty tough. You can't get MoonPay to work. That's crazy. With the crazy-ass fees that they have, you'd think that it would be a little bit uh, easier to do. MoonPay. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Rob, can you ask Guy to do a different alter ego each non-financial advice will be entertaining? Yeah, that'd be funny. You know what'd be funny is if if we say, hey Ben, or hey, hey guy, show up as uh as Craig Wright next week. And then like like the one after that, hey, show up as uh Satoshi Nakamoto and like tell us like like what he if he would condone the behavior that we're doing or if he would, uh, you know, how we would, that would be pretty interesting. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Casa Loste. I am down 50% in all investments, waiting for bluer skies, holding and DCing for now. I have hope for the future. Yeah, I do too. My friend, uh, my friend Mullet says this. He goes, it's amazing to me how a short-term short -term trade becomes a long-term investment when things go sideways. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> DCA was the rumble scene from Anchorman. Classic. <clears throat> the alleys. How will it be different this time? You know, like we talked about this in the show. And it was a question from Ben, and it was, it was pretty good. It was, how do, let me see. The question was, moving into 2023, 2024, are things going to change, or what's the outlook for it? And uh, me and Guy were pretty much the same. It was, it really comes down to uh, the macro environment. And then, I will say this, and I didn't say that. Say it there. I wish I, I wish I would have remembered. But you know how everybody talks about how you know Bitcoin's never been through a recession, which is true. We started in two thousand nine, two thousand eight, nine, two thousand nine, and 
that's when Bitcoin was created. So of course we never seen a recession, but people also said that we never, never lived through a pandemic. We did okay there, right? And then people say, well, we never gone through a war. I'm like, yeah, we did. It's called the, Af the uh, Afghanistan war. It went from 2001 to 2021. We were in a war for two decades here in America. Didn't seem like that affected uh, crypto too much at all whatsoever. So I know there's a, there's, a, there's a war in Ukraine and there's different circumstances. Granted, you can make the case, obviously. But it just seems like the longer that the Ukraine war drags on, the more people just get comfortable with war because that's how we do things. We just get comfortable with things and just accept them. And there's not the ambiguity, which is what frightens and spooks the market. That's what spooks the market. Not that there isn't a war, but what's going to happen with the war. As it drags on, like it did in Afghanistan, uh, they won't really care about it. The only thing they'll, they'll, that they'll care about now is, you know, Fed pivots and, and unemployment rates and, and uh, uh, inflation, if it's going to go down or, or keep going up or whatever. So that's, I think, the, the big thing. So will we do it this time? Potentially. And I talked and I did say this, like just like in 2007, 8, 9, um, you know, tech companies took a big hit. It took a big hit in 2001 where Amazon went down, down 95 percent. They took another big hit in 2008 when Amazon went down between 50 and 60 percent. The same thing with Facebook. So I think the same thing will happen with uh, with Bitcoin. I don't see why a lot of people would hang on to it unless the only thing that gives me hope, hope is that if you look at the one you're holding, it's like, I'll show you. Hold on. Let me, let me just add this in. Come on. FA. There. Oh, Jerry Hall. This is uh, into the block. Maybe you probably want to see my screen, huh? Let's see. Let me put in my password. Ah, this. This holder's composition by time held. I got to tell you, like, oh, hold on. I signed in with the wrong one. Da, 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 da. This. Okay. If you take a look at this, like the people that have been holding on to Bitcoin for a year plus in a particular address just keeps going up. That's in the blue. Let me just get rid of cruisers and traders. Look at that. 72% of people held over this last year. This is the junkiest year you could possibly hold on to it. And people are like, I don't care. I don't care. So that right there, that's the one thing that's like, well, there's that and some other things, which I take a look at and go, that's very positive. If you can deal with that, I mean, I mean, shoot, you're looking at, what was the all time high? Six, seven, six, nine thousand. So you probably hold, you, you would probably hold when it eventually goes below 12,000, which I think it will. Ah. Uh, Whose channel is the show on? We rotate. Uh, I was on Ben's. And then if you want to find the video, I just added it in. Or just search into the Cryptoverse. And the uh, last video was that. But then the NFA video is right there. It was good. And then we rotate. it will be on my show. Or my show. My channel next week. What time is it? Okay. What? Regulation needs to come for some of these tokens. The information asymmetry on obvious rug pulls hurts people. I'm a little surprised people keep falling for them, though. I got to tell you, that's not a very popular opinion, hardcore analysis. They will tell you that <clears throat> this is crypto and you need to do your own research and tough. That's pretty much it. That's really what they say. So... I happen to disagree with them too. I think there should be a little bit, I mean, especially with centralized exchanges. I mean, should we keep allowing them to commingle and rip us off? Should we keep allowing them 
this is the thing. Like, how many, how many of us are really in crypto right now? If you walk out on the street and you say, hey, did you, did you, were you aware of that sweet bonk airdrop for Solana? Like, I don't know what you're talking about, kid. And that's it. So, like, when I take a look at this, um, we know about commingling, right? We know about taking it off the exchanges. But how many of us are going to be the sheepdogs for the sheep when they come in in 2024, 5, and 6 and be able to say, hey, you know, watch yourself because this can happen. I mean, I'll still be around. You'll still be around, obviously. But it's going to be so diluted with so many people and so much noise. There's going to be so many people getting ripped off left and right. Oh, if you're a scammer, whew, bull runs are the sweetest. So, but again, you know, that's the, that's the uh, battle cry for, for crypto. Too bad, essentially. Mm, let's see. <laughs> Chris has got a good point. Our recessions usually this anticipated. It feels like everyone is expecting one this year. Could it be people front running it? Could be. But I got to tell you, like before I got into crypto, like I never invested into stocks or obviously crypto um, or T-bills or bonds or anything like that. I mostly just invested into my businesses and to real estate because that was, that was it. I'm like, I thought stocks were for suckers. <laughs> Because I'm like, who wants to wait that much time? You know, I can I can buy a house, I can I I can rent it out, I can start you know making positive cash flow right now. It's good for tax reasons, and of course, if I really needed something, I can just sell it immediately. I just looked at stocks as like something stupid. You know, what are you gonna do? And then, um, so I never paid attention to recessions, and then I'm like, well, you know, recessions here, whatever. Prices go down, prices go up. I always thought to myself, hey, if prices go. You know, if prices go down, then that's good for me. I can buy some houses. And of course, there was a, there's a recession. Short-term rentals aren't going to do so well. It's okay. I'll just do long-term rentals because guess what? The people that uh, lost their house because we're in a recession, that sucks. But guess what? You need some place to rent. I got a place to rent. Come rent one of my places. That's exactly how I felt. And I didn't really care so much about it. So with And I just responded. So like with this one, you're right. Could it be that? Well, maybe just because we're in this space, right? I mean, talk to any average Joe or Jane off the street and say, what do you think about, you know, uh, the recession likelihood, soft or, or hard recession? Like, I don't know. I'm just waiting for a raise from my job. That's all I see. Is anybody ever swimming in the pool behind you? This pool? Well, it's a green screen, so no. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, Gustavo, same thing. There's going to be a link. Ah, gee, many Christmas, sweet Grain Joseph. Let's just do this. Everybody, come along with a ride on a ride with me. Let's update my website. Huh? Huh? Okay. Let's see. So I should have done this before, but I didn't do it. Okay. Ah, here we go. Let's do this. Okay, here's the website. Again, link in the description. Click here in the contest. Let's duplicate this. Duplicate. Bring it down here. Let's change this out. Replace image. Insert from you are. Dang it. That's what I want. I don't need that. Upload files, select file, desktop. Where's that screenshot? This one here. Hopefully this goes through. I've never done this live, so. Hmm. 
All right. So, sure. That's fine. Okay. And I'll say, if you haven't, didn't see your name, click here. Above? Come on. To the competition. You're gonna be able to want to see that, right? So let's see. White. Okay. Let's change this. Come on. New tab. I'll make this link to same thing. New window. Yeah, sure. Save. Great. Let's take a look at this. Okay. So there's the website. Again, link in the description. Sweatcoin Jammer Challenge right here. Uh, prizes, prizes, prizes. Walking Man Mess Medicine. Click to see if you're in the contest, which will bring you to this page. There you go. Didn't see your name above? Click here to be out of the competition. We're going to click there. And sign up with your Sweatcoin app username. Remember, there's your name and your username. Sometimes it may be different. Your username is this right here. You can find that in the app. Okay. That was a little bit longer explanation, but uh, thanks for coming by. <laughs> Pool was emptied. It's now half up. Yeah, we have a leak in the pool. So now we have to have somebody in here. There's a, that's just how it goes. Leaks in the pools. I think my wife would not appreciate that. That is a good one. Rob is a dad, is a great password. 9% half pipe. Ah, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. The alleys, you're welcome. Aristotle. It's a good question. And Andrew brings up a good point. How is Bitcoin still at 16.8 for all the terrible news? Great thing. It's resilient, but it's Bitcoin's resilient because of the people that have invested into Bitcoin are resilient. That's what it comes down to. Startlet's got a good point. You, Guy, Ben, Eric, Crown, Bankless taught me so much. The missing part is deeper understanding of the tech beyond the company name. You recommend how to educate myself at a deeper level. Andreas Antonopoulos is a good one. And then also Heshoshi, who is, also, who is a developer and also has a great YouTube channel. Take a look at those two guys. And of course, if you really want to get, well, Charles Hoskinson doesn't really do a lot of technical stuff on his channel. Hmm. Good question. Peter says, what would the best crypto legislation look like? It would look like the same thing that Law 230 did in the mid-90s. Law 230 allowed for the internet to flourish. And really what it just came down to was this. It said, if you are the owner of said website, you cannot be sued for things that are said on your website. So if somebody was posting something or a blog post or something like that, and you own the website, they said something ridiculous or slanderous or whatever else, you, the owner, couldn't be held liable. And that's what held a lot of people back. Like, I don't want to be sued because of something that somebody says on my, on my website. That's one of those laws where government got it right. I know people don't believe me that government can actually get things right, but at some point they can. So for me, what would the crypto legislation look like? It would just, it would be a little bit more hands off, but give us a little bit of guidance. First, it would tell us what's a security. I don't know why it takes Gary Gensler uh, years to do these things. Although he's been very clear. He's like, I will tell you what, what it is. And he's pretty much saying everything is a security except for Bitcoin. And that's it. And uh, that's how he interprets the law. And it's, it's, uh, that's where we go. So it would take an act of Congress, literally, to shape what is 
a currency, to define what a currency is, to define what a security is, and to define what a commodity is as it pertains to digital assets. I don't think we should be using the Howey test from 1933 to distinguish what a digital asset is, because if you were use the word digital in 1933, they had no idea what you're talking about. I think there needs to be some updated standards or at the very, I think the best option would to create a fourth organization, not the SEC, not the OCC, not the CFTC, but some other three or four letter organization in the government, which can determine what a digital asset is. You've already got a commodity, CFTC. You've already got a currency in the OCC, and you already got what a security is in the SEC. So just push it to the fourth regulatory agency in the government and let them be responsible for what a digital asset is and oversee that. I don't understand why they have to go through the SEC or they have to go through CFTC or OCC. It doesn't make any sense. Ah. Uh. Let's see. You're right, Aristotle. <laughs> Paul, you should really give Bonk more thought. Look, man, I took a look at it, and I think it was a fair assessment of the video that I, I took about. I didn't call it an outright scam. I didn't, I didn't say that it had no utility, and I didn't say that it had the most fantastic utility of all time. I just laid the points down and said, this is where it is. This is the price point of where we're at. We've lost 50%. This is the utility that I see from the website. And this is the airdrop of what it was and 50% from the community. That was it. I let the people make their decision. Beyond that, I will not be investing into a dog coin. Paul, are you going to invest into a dog coin named Bonk? I don't think you are. I think you probably do some... I, I think you're more susceptible to getting into, if I was going to invest in anything, it'd probably be Dogecoin. And the only reason for that is because I think at some point, Elon Musk is going to bring that into Twitter. There is utility. I can get behind that. And that's it. Old Bear, I've noticed home pricing starting to drop in our area. That's good. Like I said on the uh, NFA show, it wasn't like the person that made the most money that, that we've ever known uh, I was a guy named David from El Paso and he sold, he was a big real estate agent or real estate broker, sold all his real estate in 2006 or seven, waited for the crash, bought everything, pains in the dollar, negotiated with banks all day long and bought up so much property. He owns a, a big chunk of that city now just because he waited for the right time. That's just it. You don't have to make you don't have to make all these fantastic trades and do all this stuff and da da da. You just got to be prepared to be in the right place at the right time and have the right mindset. If you can do that, that's all you need. That's how champions are made, I think. <laughs> Boomer Rob updating his website. This will take all day. I thought it was pretty fast, honestly. It would have gone faster if my website was, uh, if my connection was quicker. I'm not a developer. That was just easy stuff. So yeah, subscribe to Beauty's channel. Beauty has a great channel. It's a great YouTube channel, and it's entertaining. I do like it. That's funny. Bullish on Rob's full of bottom is in. The bottom is in. That's very true. Yeah, Charles is more like a philosopher, and that's fine. Everybody needs an outlet. That's why I'm on this channel. Cryptocito, Cryptocito is the best Cosmos YouTuber. You're probably right. And in uh, one hour, I have an interview with him. Let's see. Let me make sure that's right. Come on, phone. Do your magic. So Cryptocito, if you don't know, he has a great channel. He's really big into, yeah, 2 o'clock. He's got his, he's really big into Cosmos, and he really goes deep into it. And uh, I just liked his videos. Jerry Hall introduced me to him. So I said, I'd reach out to him and go, let's do a <clears throat> collaboration and talk to me and everybody about why Cosmos is going to be so big. One thing he did say, which is pretty interesting, he said, because there's so many things being built on Cosmos. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Luna built on Cosmos? Not that that's a bad thing, but I'm just saying, let me make sure that's right. 
I could have sworn. Yeah. Terra Luna, Crypto.com, Adam, and a bunch more. They were built on Cosmos. Not that they have anything to do with it, but it worked. You know, there was no hiccups and problems. It just, you know, Luna got ahead of itself and was collapsed by FTX, I believe. So what was interesting, what he said was all the, when you stake um, your Atom, you'll be able to earn rewards, but not just an Atom, in all the different cryptos that are being built on Cosmos, which is like a layer zero. And I thought, if that's true, that's huge. So everything that you stake on, imagine getting like you're, you're staking your Atom and you get also Crypto.com and at some point you get Luna and whatever else is on there now. I'm probably not saying that right, but that's why I'm going to have uh, Crypto Seat to one. <clears throat> Scott says government got it right. Many signs of conservatives would disagree. Look, man. <clears throat> so that was... That was a decision by the owners of said social media outlets. But let's be honest. If we didn't have Section 230, would the Internet have flourished or not? That's what you have to think to yourself. Would people have said like, eh, we'll just, you know, let it, let it go. And, and now we can dip our toes in, even though we might, get, we, we might get sued. I don't think so. I think it's the same thing that happened or is happening with institutions. They're like, we'd like to get into crypto. The problem is, is that we don't want to be accused of selling and dabbling in in unregistered securities and have a big fine. Well, if you really think about it, that's kind of like the price of doing business. I mean, JP Morgan gets fined all the time. They don't really give two, two shakes, so whatever. All right. So Dick says, I added my name to the list. Don't see it. It takes time. It takes up to three days. To get on there, but don't worry, all your steps will be counted. <laughs> Ponco de Bervo is called boop. Yeah, Gio's got a good point. And someone said the same, same thing. After being in the crypto space for the last year and getting screwed royally, then I see people make huge gains on meme coins. Look, I look at that too, and I think to myself, damn, I wish I would have. Why well, don't I? In the beginning, I would have looked at that and go, man, I wish I would have caught that tailwind. But in all honesty, it, it doesn't matter. You have to understand that. I'll just show you this. It's not about get rich quicks and you know how much money you can make in a 24-hour period. I mean, it is if you want to live that lifestyle. But in all honesty, it's risque. So you can see, let's do 14 days. So here's where it usually happens, right? If you're around here, great, you're making a bunch of money. And if you can sell here, great. The chances of you are selling here are minimal. Even though it went up 1,700%, right? A lot of people won't do it. They won't sell here. And they're like, oh, there's just a little bit of a, it'll go back up. And then they'll, they'll catch it here. A little bit of gains, no big deal. But then what happens is people just hold on because they keep believing and believing and believing, and then down you go. Me personally, this, this is just another part of the crypto market that is just inevitable. I don't care about these. What I care about is these. I'm not perfect, but I know that if I just stick around, I pick the right, the right cryptos, the right digital assets, and even if as slow as Bitcoin is, like I bought right here. No, I bought down here, 7,700 bucks, but I also bought here at 12,000 and roughly 17,000. And then I lost it and I just held on to it and I kept accumulating. Again, I don't care about this stuff. I don't care about these peaks and valleys. I'm waiting for the opportunity to sell. And 
I didn't sell up here, but I got pretty close. I didn't sell all of it, but I did okay. That's all I care about. I don't care about 24 hours, like the year strategy. And we did a video on this. We, we compared investing in two years after the all-time high, which would be 2015, 2019, and 2023, as compared to investing one year after the all-time high. And it's not even close. It's actually two years, and it just takes time. That's it. That's it. Ah, almost time. Ooh, Dixie down 1%. Nikolai, so one's that interviewing. I don't know. I got to do it first. Mm. <laughs> Can you do a how-to on fixing your pool? I cannot. Yeah, this is a good one. Doug says, I made 20000 plus from an early SHIB investment of $400. I'm out now, but SHIB does have an ecosystem and some building happening. I still won't go back, though, nor will I with Bonk. Yeah, it just depends on your risk tolerance. Nikki says, what's your favorite food there in Puerto Rico? None. Not a big fan of the food here. Sorry, Puerto Ricans. It's just the truth. Uh, I like San Juan Smokehouse. I got uh, my favorite, which is brisket, but it's very difficult to find good food for me, right? Because, I mean, in Texas, more specifically in El Paso, which is right by Mexico, everything stays a certain way and is super spicy. Here is not like that. Ooh, DCF. Cosmos is ridiculously bullish. Cosmos SDK. Tinder Mint. Used by a lot more products than most people know. It's true. In fact, Binance uses Tinder Mint. Oh, I didn't know that. Cadena does as well. See, that's the thing about uh, Cosmos. I need to bring to people's attention. Oof, crime any Christmas. Electricity said a double in San Diego. Yeah, again, I mean, people are spending like it's, people are spending like it's 2021. I was listening to the All In podcast and uh, I don't know who it was. It was, Gold, it was Sachs or, or Shamath. Somebody was in, in Las Vegas for the holidays and he was in a taxi ride. And then a taxi cab driver said, yeah, I've never seen Vegas this packed in December. He goes, usually, you know, we get, you know, a couple of people here, especially for January. He goes, but I've never, and he was like in his 40s or something like that. He said, I've never seen so many people in Las Vegas than this December. People are traveling and spending like nobody's business. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be tough when you start to see those, you know, maybe those layoffs and, and things like that. However, one more thing that was interesting is that um, uh, salaries keep going up. So I'm like, you know, if the salaries keep going up for in, in different industries and uh, the inflation becomes stagnant or drops a little bit or even goes up a little bit, then you can handle inflation. Is that good? Will people get used to it? It's not the, that will be bad overall for the economy because we have to keep everything high. But that looks like these things, that's where we're going to. That's a problem moving forward. Yes, selling man, walk away. And then something about come back in October and something, something. Mm. Huh. Mm. I can't add you personally. You have to go through that link. Yeah. Gio says, since the unemployment rate has fallen in December, Fed increasing the rate, is it actually working? <sighs> not, not overall, looks like. How long are they intending to do so? Until they get under control. And they're not going to stop. I'm going to ask you a question. Who, who was the Fed chair in the 70s? Before Volcker. Does anybody know that name? You probably don't. Most of you don't. Because he didn't do what he was supposed to do, which was put inflation under control. He is a footnote in history. 
Nobody references him. His name is Burns. And I don't even know his, his first name. Burns was the Fed chair. And he raised rates, thought it was under control, pivoted, didn't happen, doubled up. It's like not extinguishing a fire. And then he got fired and Volcker came in and said, okay, I'm going to be that guy. I will stomp out inflation. He did. And it was brutally tough, apparently. But he did his job and he avoided, avoided what they thought could have been a, not a recession, but a depression. So I think that's where Jerome's going for. Yeah, Scott's got a good point. How will the Fed increase the rate? The rate works to lower inflation when Congress blows up the spending, printing the tune of $1.7 trillion. Ah, America. Yeah. And that's it. Ah, Arthur Burns. Salaries keep going up, but never keep pace with inflation. The big boys only fear deflation because they're over leveraged. I think so. Thanks, fraction reserve. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, everybody. So that's it. So look, we've been here an hour and four minutes. It's always fun to hang around and chat with people, ask some questions. And uh, that's all. So I got today is a full day. I've got Cryptocito and Jerry at two. I got Omar an interview at three. Omar, it was an interesting, he was, he was a guy that was a, a multi-million dollar trader and he lost everything in the crash, this recent one. And now he's working in Delhi. So I'm interviewing him. And then uh, Papa, Papa Mike from Ladies and D-Nuts NFT projects at four. That'll be good. And then next week, I got Sin City Crypto and Alaska Gold Rush. And then also uh, a, lo a local lawyer is going to come in and talk to us about what it means to create a trust or a will. These are the things that you can that you can help yourself with the family. So especially trust, which is what we have when you transferred everything over and tax incentives, blah, blah. So that'll be coming up uh, next week. So anyhow, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.